Okay, uh, we got the Iron Bowl at home this week. Um, I know all of our players and our coaches are extremely excited about that. You know, you look at last year's game and first half, I thought we uh, we played a good first half. It got away from us in the second half. We're going to have to do a good job of really playing four quarters of football come Saturday. You know, when you look at them this year offensively, um, you know, one of the best in the country, uh, one of the more explosive offenses, if not the most explosive offense. You look at the receivers, they can all take short ones a long way. The running backs are very impressive. Uh, do a good job running, but they also do a good job catching the ball out of the backfield. And then, of course, their offensive line is one of the best uh, in the country. They do have a new quarterback, but uh, the games he's played, he's been efficient. And it uh, looks like he has a good uh, grasp of the offense. You know, when you look at their defense, um, you know, one of the top-ranked defenses uh, in our league, again, um, real impressed with the guys they have on the back end. They've got very good ball skills and can really run. And then special teams, you know, really what stands out to me is their punt returner, uh, Waddle. He's dynamic. Um, you know, he's he's changed games, he's changed field position. Uh, you turn on the tape and it's explosive play after explosive play. So we're going to have to do a super job, you know, dealing with him. Uh, this will be our, our fifth top ten opponent. So the good thing is it won't be a shock to our system and really hoping that will be an advantage for us. Um, it will be senior day, which is always special, um, you know, to honor this group that uh, has, has, has done such a good job for us. And then I want to congratulate Derek Brown. Um, you know, finalist for six national awards. Uh, he chose to come back, and uh, he's had his best season. Um, you know, he's playing as good a football as anybody in the country. And, um, you know, I know that Heisman is usually for offensive players and all that, but uh, there can't be too many uh, better players around the country than him. So real, uh, real excited for him. But, you know, overall, we're, uh, we're excited at the Iron Bowl, and we're excited that uh, we're playing at home. Questions? Sometimes. Well, I think you you got to focus on the Iron Bowl right now and the fact that we are battle tested. We played uh, some of the the best teams in the country, um, you know, and so we we hung in there. We had chances to win, you know, some of those. So I think that really helps us. And then, you know, you look at the future. I mean, we've got some outstanding young guys. Uh, I know the focus has been on the seniors, which have done a super job, but we've got some young guys that can flat out play. So the future is real. Uh, real bright, real excited uh, for the future, and uh, you know we'll cross that bridge as far as the schedule goes. You know next year. So that's a lot, a lot different than a few years ago. But most people now talk about Alabama's offense. What do you see out of Alabama's defense? Yeah, well, like I said, statistically they're one of the best in the league. Uh, they play a lot of guys up front. Uh, they have some young linebackers, but they're very talented. But really, what stands out to me, their secondary is is um, very impressive to watch. Uh, they have got very good ball skills. They can all run, um, and they all tackle well, and, you know, they hadn't given up a whole lot of explosive plays. Where have you seen Bo progress since, since that Oregon game? What's that? Where have you seen Bo progress since that Oregon game? I think it's overall just, just understanding of, uh, of our offense, uh, having a better feel for his teammates, um, and just all the above, you know. and. You know, he's learned this year against the toughest defenses probably in all of college football, like we talked about with the, the schedule. And this is another one. But, uh, you know, that really helps your learning curve uh, and accelerates learning. And, uh, you know, I think he's got a good command of, uh, of our offense and, you know, and the personnel that we have around him. Gus, if I count it right, he's got like 137 passes without an interception and hasn't thrown but one since the Florida game. And that was the long pass yeah. that LSU was playing. How difficult is that for a freshman to, at, when he throws it as much yeah. as he's thrown it? Yeah, I, I think I think that says a lot about his decision making. Uh, protecting the football is the number one thing, especially when you're playing in big games. And and he's really uh, you know it allows you to call plays and um, you know trust the quarterback that we're not going to turn it over. That's probably the biggest thing. But that is very impressive, um, especially for a young quarterback with the defenses that he's went against. Yeah, you know, when when you look back at close games, um, you know, there's a fine line between winning and losing. And a lot of times it's either one or two plays, impact plays when the game's on the line that you have to make to win the game. And that's probably the, the thing that has stood out the most. We've been very close. 
we had opportunities. You look back, there's one or two things, and if you would have made those plays, we would have had a good chance to win or we'd have won the game. Um, so, you know, when you're playing, um, you know, it's the top teams, you got to make plays to win the game. And so that's really our goal for this one, and, uh, you know, that we'll need to do that. Is it the law of averages at some point that you come out on the right side of the big plays? When you I, I'd like to think so. I believe in God. I don't believe in a football guy. No. No, I've never been asked that one. When you think of the seniors that you're going to honor, what, what are some things about this class? That kind of oh, well, first of all, they're outstanding young men with outstanding families and uh, have represented Auburn uh, super, uh, you know, off the field, on the field, and some very, very talented football players too. So, uh, you know, I say it every year. You get close to guys and you're with them three and four years, some of them five years. And, um, you know, this is their last rodeo, you know, last home game, which is always special. Then you throw the Iron Bowl on top of that. And it's as good as it gets. And uh, I know that you can just sense our leadership. And you can really sense the young guys really rallying behind them, knowing how important this is uh, to them and how important their legacy is, you know, especially a game like this. We're almost in the road here with your season back as play caller. How do you think you've done? How's that gone? Yeah, we've uh, at times we've uh, played good football. At times, like I said, we've come up a little short, and um, you know, feel good about going into this one. Um, we need to play well on offense. We know that, and uh, really looking forward to uh, to getting out there with a bunch. There hasn't been a strictly defensive player that's been a Heisman finalist since 2012, I think. That's right. What, what, do, you, what do you think sets there apart? That you know, well, I mean, I, I said that. You usually don't have defensive guys, but if you just look at who the best players are, he needs to be in that conversation. So I don't care if it's a kicker or a defensive player or an offensive player. He's dominant, and uh, he's a game-changing type type player. And so that's the reason I just wanted to mention that. But yeah, I knew the I knew the fact that that doesn't happen much. As, a, as an offensive coach, how do you deal with a guy like him if you're game planning? Oh, yeah, you game plan. I mean, you got a game plan uh, around him, and it really starts with him. And, you know, when you go against him in practice, it's the same deal. I mean, he's uh, he's a disruptor, um, really raised his level. He had a good year last year, but he's really raised his level, playing with confidence, and he's disrupting things. And he really makes people around him, um, you know, better. In the big games this year, you guys have had a good bit of scoring opportunities and just haven't been able to finish those mm -hmm. drives. Well, it, it's about execution in the moment. That's kind of what the question Brandon asked. I mean, you've got to execute in the moment and how you do that, you do on the practice field and just keep repping and, you know, get more confidence and you get more confidence by reps in practice. That's that's when you get better and that's what we've constantly tried to do and a lot of things carry over. Um, you know, even though you may have not called something or only called something once in practice reps, you know, you want to make sure and, and call the things that – um, your your players feel co comfortable with that they've repped in practice time and time again uh, and been successful and so you know that's that's part of it and uh, you know we'll need to hit those when we have those opportunities uh, and score touchdowns. You well, I know, Alabama's got 19 plays of 40 or more yards. Yeah. They've only given up two. Yeah. How, how tough is that? Yeah, I think you just said it. I mean, you know, they're the most explosive or one of the most explosive offenses in the entire country. They've given up very few. And I think the back end guys um, have a lot to, to, to say for that. I mean, they've done a good job in their one on one uh, opportunities, and uh, they've not given up that many. You said last night, you, how tough is it to coach against Nick Saban when makes his team so hard to beat? Well, they're, they're, first of all, they're talented. They're always going to be one of the most talented teams in the country or the most talented. Um, and, you know, he, obviously he does a, a good job coaching them. But, you know, this is what the 10th Iron Bowl I've been part of. And uh, so you know each other pretty good. And uh, we'll see what happens. Gus, how different is it, just the whole atmosphere for this game, compared to any other game? Yeah, there, there's no, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like Iron Bowl's different. Uh, it was, you know, when I first got here, everybody would talk about it, about how special it was, and you go, okay, yeah, but you got to experience it. It's one of those things that all you got to do is experience it one time, you know, whether you're a coach, player, or fan, and it's different. And, um, you know, it, it's real special. 
And, uh, you know, I feel blessed. Uh, this will be my 10th tenth, tenth one. Yes, you talked about avoiding tendencies, predictable situations. How important is that now at the end of the year where teams have so much film? So yeah, much oh, it's, it's very important. No, there's no doubt, especially the the more talented team you're playing. I mean, you're going to have to try to keep them off balance, and uh, that's a big, big factor. Mike Horton and J.J. Wilson ready to get up? Yeah, both of them practiced yesterday, and, and both of them will practice again today. Was yesterday a full-blown practice? Yeah, yesterday was like our regular Sunday practice, so it was just an hour practice. We just tried to stay in routine. We switched our off day to a regular day, and we got more time since we're not in school. So same uh, schedule we've been doing. Today will be our big work day, you know, our, our regular Tuesday. We'll get back on track, and we'll have a normal Wednesday tomorrow, and then Thursday we'll get up early and have our Thursday practice and get the guys out you know, around noon so they can spend time with their families and and everything that goes with that. Do you think of J.J. as a wideout now? Uh, he, he's he's very flexible. I mean, he can put his hand down and can block, um, and then we can split him out. You've seen us move him around outside, inside, so he gives you a lot of flexibility, um, you know, to, to move him around. And you like him because he catches the ball well. Yeah, it? he does. He does a good job of catching the ball. Yeah. And he does a good job blocking, too. I mean, uh, he's he's done a very well, solid job of that. he doesn't look like a wideout, right? I mean, What's that? He doesn't look like a wideout. I mean, he's a former linebacker. Yeah. I mean, you knew that. I did know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm impressed you knew that. You mentioned you mentioned him earlier, but Matt Jones being the starting quarterback in yeah. this game, probably. What have you seen out of him, and how does that kind of the matchup kind of change maybe a little bit? Well, you know, I think if you look, I mean, he's uh, you know he's got unbelievable talent all around him. Um, and, you know, we've got the game or two on him and all that. And you can see he has a good understanding, you know, of their offense. Um, you know, so – you just got to predict, you know, how much they're going to put on him, how, how they're going to utilize him, and everything that goes with that. It probably sounds crazy outside, but a you know, team that's averaging 340 yards passing, but how important is it to, to make them one-dimensional and not allow them to be? You know, I think that's a goal, football. but this, yeah. And, and they're very good at running the football, too, now. And I think you can see that by their average. And, um, you know, so you definitely got to you got to stop the run and you got to stay away from the big plays. And that's the challenge on the big plays because you look at their explosive plays that somebody just talked about and probably half of them are short ones that went long. Um, you know, so very, very explosive offense. You mentioned this being your 10th iron ball. I can guess which one's your favorite, but what's the most heartbreaking one you've been through? Uh, I mean, any time you lose to them, it, it doesn't feel good. Um, but which one would you say was my favorite? Uh, I would say the kick six, 2013. 2010 was a lot of fun. Yeah. So that's yep. your favorite over the kick six. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> you like it better than the kick six. I like both of them. <laughs> was the throwback? Hmm? Was the throwback? Is that your favorite call? The throwback? Yeah. Which one? To Lutzen Kirkin. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah, that, that was, uh, that was uh, Coach Chiswick's favorite play. So we called it for him, and it worked. That's really nice of you to say. Yeah. You could have taken all the credit for that. No, no. He, 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 that, that was his play. Was it 55 45 loss? Maybe I didn't like that one. No, I didn't like that one at all. <laughs> all right, anything else? All right, thanks, guys.